So in this video we're going to be looking at Antix Linux. Now Antix is a lightweight version of Linux very similar to Puppy. Um, it's intended to run on antiquated or low specification hardware um, but it's a fully function feature rich Linux so um, I see this pretty much as a direct competitor to something like Puppy. So Antix is a version of Mepis Linux. But unlike the full version of Mepis, known as simply Mepis, Antix is intended for antiquated or low specification hardware. So it's a very low footprint version of Mepis. Now, unusually, Antix gives you a choice of two basic window managers. So at the moment we have booted into the default window manager which is known as IceWM but you can also choose to boot into Fluxbox. Now Fluxbox desktop is very similar to this. It's a little bit more lightweight but it will look very very similar to this. Uh, the only differences are really that this toolbar at the bottom is a little bit more basic and that you have to access the main menu through a right click of the mouse onto the desktop. So here we are in the IceWM desktop so let's go ahead and take a quick tour of it. So first thing you'll notice is up here in the left hand side of the screen are a number of shortcut icons. So these are shortcuts to your file manager, your internet browser, your video player, your music player um, shortcut to the command line, the control center where you can configure how the operating system looks and behaves, um, shortcut to the word processor, and an icon here to install Antix to your hard disk if you so wish. So I should make clear here that I'm running Antix off a USB stick. The PC I'm using here doesn't have an internal hard disk. Well, it does, but it doesn't function anymore. So I'm having to run this from a USB stick which is a good test for a lightweight Linux after all. Up here in the right hand corner you'll see um, the process display which is really quite a nice idea I think. So always on the desktop you see a readout of exactly what your system's doing here. So we can see the uptime, we can see the current date, we can see what our CPU is doing at the moment, 50%. Um, we can see what RAM we've got available, what our swap space is, uh, zero because we didn't configure any, um, how many processes are running, etc. So that's a nice little indication of how your system's doing and it's ever present as long as you haven't got a window covering it. So your main interaction with Antics is going to be with this uh, line at the bottom which I refer to as the Antics panel here. So Firstly, in the bottom right hand corner is this large button which says Antix. If you click on that, what happens is it opens up the main menu. So at the top here we'll see a number of shortcuts again. So again, a shortcut to our command line, our file manager, our web browser, our text editor and utility to take screenshots, etc. The next option here is where most of our GUI applications are installed. So, very similar to Simply Mepis in that you get a full suite of software installed um, at installation time. However, unlike Simply Mepis, the utilities are very different. So, these applications are mainly geared around a low footprint operating system. So, a lot of these um, applications are similar to the ones that you get for instance with Puppy Linux. So we've got a number of accessories down here um, such as text editor, um, screenshotter, etc. Got some basic games to keep you uh, amused you know, while you're waiting for things to happen. You've got some graphics packages for editing static images and things. You've got your internet applications such as uh, your browser and your uh, chat client etc. Email client etc. You've got some office applications um, which basically center really around Abbey Word which is the word processor and GNumeric which is the spreadsheet. Um, you've got some basic other things like an address book and a phone book. Um, 
So we've got some other antics based um, applications for configuring things. We've got a few programming tools. We've got some multimedia applications for playing, for instance, um, MP4s or MP3s and for ripping CDs, etc. Um, we've got some system tools which allow you to do things you know, related to uh, system housekeeping such as uh, backup, etc. and your file manager. And we've also got access here to preferences where we can configure the desktop and the, uh, the operating system um, as we like it. Um, underneath the applications option we've got some basic um, basically command line non GUI type functions here. Um, we've got uh, access to desktop settings for both uh, uh, Rocks.io and ISWM. We've got system tools again here, various different uh, categories of tool. We've got access to the help libraries and finally we've got access to the Antics installer. This option here gives you a little pop-up window which allows you to run a script without actually dropping to the command line and again we've got another settings access down here where we can mess about with the desktop themes etc. Finally we've got the options to actually log out the system and reboot etc. So if we click away from that um, menu it'll go away and uh, let's look at the icon immediately to the right here. This is the show desktop icon, it's very similar to uh, the one in Windows and if we go to a workspace, I think workspace 4 has got a couple of windows open here so if I click on that it'll just minimize those windows that are up down here to the center of the, uh, the panel at the bottom and uh, if I click it again it'll take them back to where they were before so it's a toggle down toggle back so if you want a quick access to say those shortcuts on the desktop you can minimize your windows click on the icon and uh, access uh, the application that way okay so I'll just click that back up and go back to workspace one um, to the right of the show desktop icon we've got access to our file manager which is called Thunar on this system so just like any other file manager that you've probably come across, you've got access to your trash can, etc. Different directories. If you double click on a directory, you go down into them. Um, for instance, these are shown as text documents, different icons for different types of file. Uh, if we look in the videos folder, okay, we've got a little icon for a video here. If we right click any item here, we get the option to either open it, in this case with the GNOME M player, because it's a video. You can also copy the file into the clipboard, you can delete it, rename it, change the properties, etc. So, simple but effective. So that's the file manager. To the right of our file manager we have access to our command line. So if I click on the icon there, it'll bring up a command line window and you can type in your normal, regular Linux commands. I just do a control D to shut it down. To the right of my command line icon I have access to my internet browser so I click on that and immediately it brings up my uh, my home page here and very similar to other browsers and uh, this one's called IceApe. Next to the browser we have access to the control center okay this is where you can configure the desktop, change your wallpaper, edit the settings that you have um, change things to do with the system, the network, your particular session, um, you can configure disks etc and um, likewise you can configure new pieces of hardware etc. That's just so you can make the system exactly how you like it uh, without having to rely on the defaults. Next to the control center we have access to the exit icon so again normal sort of options we can lock the screen we can hibernate to disk we can just reboot the machine we can shut it down we can just log out um, but leave the system up the suspend option here obviously just puts it into a power save mode um, while we just go out and make a cup of tea for instance so I'll close that one down then we've got our four um, icons to access different virtual workspaces here so we're on workspace one Workspace 2, I haven't got anything. Workspace 3, I've got a terminal up here. Workspace 4 is where I've got my browser. 
as you can see here my two applications have a little icon in the bottom and if I click on each icon it'll take me to that particular window. One cool thing to note while I'm here is like um, simply Mepis, Antics comes with full flash support built in. So you don't have to download anything else onto your system to play a flash video. So if I just click here, you can see that the video plays immediately. And of course here, if I click on this icon here, I can change the volume so it's not too loud. So that's really quite a neat feature that you can play videos straight out the box. So very useful for newcomers. Um, also, you've got full... PDF support. So for instance I've downloaded this particular user guide here. I can play around with it and look at um, all the different chapters here straight out the box. So I don't have to um, download um, Adobe Reader or anything. So that's really quite neat. So if we just go back to the desktop area here, we've already seen the volume in action here. So just a simple slider here which changes the system volume. This last icon here gives us the current time. It doesn't really do anything if you click on it. it. doesn't give you access to the calendar. And this finally, this icon here gives you access to, if you've got any more um, icons running down in here in the system tray, if you click this, it'll actually toggle between those extra icons and the standard display. So it's just a toggle there, toggle back. And that's really all there is to, to Antics Linux. It's a nice lightweight distribution that runs on any sort of old hardware, low specification, um, but it gives you all the basic features that you need from an operating system straight out of the box. Thanks for watching.